Hey Ravens, welcome to this week's edition of ONW Now. I'm Ron Stanley. And I'm Grace Jerzak. Today we have a recap of Mold Day plus a look at Raven Athletics and much more. This past Monday, the sophomore science department held an annual Mold Day celebration. Ainsley Heisey and Lita Satterin take us into the madness. Fire up. On October 23rd, chemistry students gathered in the Flex Theater to watch explosions, eat mole-themed desserts, and learn more about science. So Mole Day is uh, partly for fun and to get kids excited about chemistry and engaged in kind of what we do. It's a lot of demos and explosions and things. And partly they learn about the mole, which is a county unit that we use in chemistry like for the whole year, basically. Many students enjoyed the experience of watching science unfold in front of their eyes. They put a bunch of uh, liquid nitrogen in a Mountain Dew bottle, and then they uh, like tie up the top, and then they blow it up with a bunch of ping pong balls in it, and there's just like a massive explosion, and it goes all over the place. For Nina Saturn, this has been Ainsley Heisey. Now back to the desk. Earlier this week, Jennifer O'Gorman and her students in the Engineering a Better World program received the 2017 Accessible Award for their TIE Fighter costume for Davy Uriah, who is limited to a wheelchair. This award is given to those who ensure that people with disabilities are able to live and work within the Olathe community as productive citizens. The amount of joy that was brought to this boy on Halloween is enormous. Have you been wondering what's been going on with Northwest Sports? Well, let's take it to game day to hear what's up this week. What's crack a lacking Ravens? I'm Haley McCormick alongside Jay Curl. The Ravens men's soccer team was back in action this past Monday at Seaback playing the Shawnee Mission North Indians in their, re in their regional semifinals. Monday night, the Ravens get ready to compete against Shawnee Mission North in their regional semifinal game. The Ravens come out slow until a free kick by Caleb Ragland puts them on the board 1-0. The Ravens continue to play aggressively, setting the tempo for the rest of the first half. Once again, Caleb Ragland marches down the field, putting it into the back, making the lead 2-0. With the momentum from the first half, the Ravens came out strong in the second, as Chase Kluzman head ones it into the net, making the lead 3-0. Finishing up the half, Kluzman kicks another into the net, ending the game with the Ravens' win 4-0. Come on, support our boys tonight at 7 over at Seaback as they look to win the regional championship against Shine Mission West. Also, shout out to our Ra Ravens gymnastics team, Sydney Weeks, Brooke Elam, and H Hallie Robertson for placing first at state, and congrats to Sydney for taking the overall competition. This is the first time in school history that the gymnastics team has won state, and the girls beat Olathe East by only .15 points. Congratulations on a great season, Ravens. Last Saturday, our Raven volleyball team went out to substate looking to take first and secure the invitation to state. The Lady Ravens dominated the day, crushing Harmon 25-4 and 25-3 in the first match, and then beating Gardner Edgerton 25-16 and 28-26 to advance to the state championship this Friday and Saturday in Topeka. We will have two spirit buses going to the game Friday, so come and join the fun. This past weekend, the cross country team competed in the regional meet at Johnson County Community College. The girls team finished fifth and the men's team finished seventh. Congratulations to Leah Wellman, Wellman and Ashton Dane as they continue to the state cross-country meet at Rimrock Farm in Lawrence this weekend. Football took on Shawnee Mission South Raiders at their home field last Friday. Last Friday night, the Ravens traveled to Shawnee Mission South to take on the Raiders. In the first ha half, quarterback Braden Cook tosses a perfect pass to Val Sheranian for an early touchdown. Still in the first half, John Bowen breaks through the line and busts in the end zone for a second touchdown in the half, the Ravens win in halftime with the lead of 27-7. Early in the third quarter, Ravens defense forces a hurried pass from South quarterback, resulting in an interception from Weston Davis. Finally in the fourth, Andrew Dumas breaks loose for the final touchdown of the night. The Ravens pull away for a 44-21 victory. That's it for sports. Let's send it back to the desk. Now, for everyone's favorite, let's take it to Grace and Addison Smith with the Halloween edition of Word from the Halls. Pumpkins can be orange, white, green, or what other color? Invisigool. <laughs> Not quite. Pink. Pink. Black. White. Wait, did you already say white? Yes. White, yeah. No, yellow. Not yellow. Blue. Wait, they can be blue? They can be blue. You'd be right. Is a pumpkin a fruit or a vegetable? 
Well, it has seeds, so... <laughs> a few moments later... A vegetable. Is it a vegetable? I believe that a pumpkin is a vegetable. Fruit. It has seeds. In what year will there be another full moon on Halloween? I'm not gonna lie, I have no freaking clue, bruh. 3045. Not that far away. 2020. In which country did children start using the phrase trick or treat? Mexico. Uh, America. Ireland? <laughs> I don't know. It's Belgium. Alaska. Alaska. Is that a country? Oh my God. That's not a country. Uh, Canada. Every Halloween, Charlie Brown helps his friend Linus wait for which character to appear on the show? <laughs> pumpkin. Uh, it's gotta be the great big pumpkin. After chocolate, what is the second most popular Halloween candy? Skittles. Skittles. Coconuts. Uh, those Reese's pumpkins. Candy corn. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow to see another episode of the Raven Minute and follow us on Twitter at ONWNow underscore Raven Daily and on Snapchat at ONWNow. For Ron Stanley and the rest of the Convergence team, this has been Grace Jerzak. Have a great day, Ravens.